Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors. We've had some people asking what our favorite Euronyms are when we're not using the Sexy Stoneflies. If you, if you uh, have seen some of our other videos, you, you see that we catch a lot of the big fish on the Sexy Stoneflies, but we catch a lot of our other fish, including some decent ones on a lot of other Euronyms that are more your typical Euronymph style. Um, so we decided that uh, we're gonna do a few um, fly tying videos in the future here with some of our favorite Euronyms. Euronymphs. Um, I'm definitely going to start off with the Peacock Ice Dub Nymph. Um, this is probably my favorite nymph outside of the Sexy Stonefly that I tie. Um, I don't know if it's just that I like the way it looks, uh, but it definitely seems to get a lot of attention from the fish. Definitely catches its share of fish. Um, as I tie this, you can use this formula for pretty much a lot of different Euro nymphs. Just mix the dubbing colors maybe mix the bead colors, and you can make a whole bunch of different kinds of nymphs just by mixing up colors. Um, you know, most of your Euro nymphs are going to be a similar style nymph, unless you're doing like a Pertagon or any of the fancier stuff that's maybe a little buggier looking. But for this particular fly, we're gonna be doing a giveaway. So we're gonna give away six peacock nymphs. Um, just three things you gotta do. Be a subscriber on the channel, Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment letting us know what kind of uh, videos you guys want to see going forward. Uh, those three things will um, will will enter you for the for the drawing, and uh, I'll randomly select a person and send you uh, six of these Euro nymphs, as well as maybe a couple of others that I like. Just so if you're a fly tire, you can kind of pattern after them. Anyway, we'll get started with this guy here. Um, we'll move this from here. Put that back in my nymph box. Since I'm giving away, I have to tie a few more if I'm giving them away to you guys. So um, we're going to start off. I'll show you guys what we're using here. Okay. So this is a, a jig style hook. It's a barbless jig style hook. Um, this particular one is a Sabre. Uh, it's like a, what is it, 30, 50 to 30. Um, it's a size 16. Um, I, I do like 14s as well. I just don't have any right now, but I, I've tied most of these in a, in a size 16. Um, you know, this is just a, a local company, so um, I tend to buy their hooks. Um, all the fly tying materials that I use, by the way, I'll provide links to these materials or at least similar materials uh, in the description below so you guys can kind of see what I'm using specifically. But anyway, we're starting off with a jig style barbless hook. Um, the bead is going to be a tungsten rainbow bead. It's a one eighth inch. Okay, so you can see all the different colors mixed in. Each bead is, is in fact, even this one, as I spin it, you see it goes from yellow to kind of pink to purple, blue, and green. So it really kind of has a, a whole bunch of different colors in it. Um, these are nice and heavy. I love these nymphs, or I love these beads. Uh, if you want to change it up at all, just change the big color. Go go to something else if you want. But a lot of people like tying flies with hot spots in them. And there's no better hot spot than a than a nice colored bead like this. So I have found them to be effective, at least in my waters. Um, you know, give them a try. See if you like them. Tie some with a regular bead as well. Okay, so in order to make this fly a little bit heavier too, I do have the tungsten bead on there, but I like to maintain a really good feel of my flies on the end of my line. So I typically add lead to the flies themselves. Um, with any Euronymphs, you know, I wanna make some lighter, I wanna make some heavier. So I'll change up how much lead I'm using or what type of lead I'm using. So typically I'm either gonna do a 0.015. If I'm doing 0.015, this is really thin lead. And so it's it's um, it's going to lay a lot finer on the actual shank of the hook, and I'm going to take a little bit more. I'm going to wrap further down the body if I'm doing that. I do like a little more weight though. I really like to be able to feel those flies well. So I'm going to use a few wraps of 0.025 today for this fly. Um, really, just adjust how much lead you're using based on you know how it feels for you. Um, I do like them heavier. All right. So I'm going to use about four or so wraps of the 0.025 lead. I'll try to do these as tight as I can so they lay in there. Well, the lead broke off on me. Um, so I got three and I'll save the extra lead here on the back side of it and wrap that an extra time. Sorry if you can't see that. I'm just trying to use my fingers to create this lead that I want. All right, break off that last bit. 
So I'm gonna push that up into the bead itself. I've got a little extra weight on there, okay? Um, for the thread, I'm basically using an Ultra Thread um, 70 in red. So this is gonna give me a little bit of an extra hot spot. If you don't want that extra hot spot, you can simply use a different color thread that's more natural like the dubbing, either a brown or a black, but I like the extra hot spot. All right, so we're gonna start by building a dam at the base of that lead. And I always build a dam at the base of the lead for a couple of reasons. I wanna secure that lead in place, and I don't want that last little piece of lead to come loose and ruin my taper of the fly. That does happen a lot of times um, when you're tying these guys. Okay, we're building up that taper. Gonna make it a little more even, that's good. And we'll go back over that thread just a little bit. All right, we got our taper going there. Bring it down to the tail where we're gonna put our tailing material. I like the way that one tapers. Okay, for the tailing material, um, I'm simply using uh, pheasant tail. You can use Coq de Leon. Uh, I don't have any particularly right now. Um, and I don't overdo the number of fibers for the um, for the tailing material, you can see I don't have a whole lot of tailing material left on this particular feather, but what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna take three fibers, um, I'm gonna take three fibers and spread them out a little bit, count out my three, and take three fibers from this feather. One, two, three. And I basically just wanna make sure that the tips are lined up, okay? This is basically gonna be my tail. And you know, the length of the tail you can adjust based on what you want. A lot of people tie them really short. I maybe tie them just a little bit more than other people. Um, but basically, you know, lay them where you want, the length that you want. Hold them down like this. Just do a little pinch wrap. And if you want, you can do a loose wrap and then you could adjust the, uh, the length. I actually like this length right now. Gonna leave that as is. Um, wrap up the taper a little bit up to the lead, and then with pheasant tail, they're delicate, so you just pull them out. All right, next step is to lay in a little bit of copper wire. Um, this is a fine copper wire. Um, it's mostly going to give it a little bit of ribbing, and it's going to it's going to help keep in some of that material, so it's not so buggy looking um, but I already cut a piece of this and uh, I do this when I'm tying I mean, when I'm tying I'm usually gonna tie a bunch of flies at once so I don't know if you can see here I've got a decently long size piece and it's just so I don't waste material but I'm literally just gonna lay this down starting where I end the um, basically where I end the lead and I'm gonna wrap that down to the tail I'm going to lay that in place. I'm just going to leave it off the back. Okay. Now we're going to go to the dubbing. And again, this is where you simply just change the dubbing or the color of the dubbing to change and make a different kind of fly. Um, so this in particular is the ice dubbing. Ice dubbing is awesome. It's got a lot of re reflectivity to it. Um, so it really, um, it really shows up well in the water. Uh, I definitely really, really like it, but it's a little harder to work with. It's um, not a natural material, and it is pretty coarse um, and very loose. And what I want to do with this fly is I want to start with a delicate taper up through a little bit bigger. And this is not easy to spin on, on the thread. So what all I do, I don't worry about dubbing wax or anything like that. You could use dubbing wax if you wanted. It might make it a little bit easier. I just go really fast when I tie these, so I tend not to do it but I wet my fingers and I grab a little bit. I'm gonna to try to spin as tightly as I can some of this on here. And a lot of it does fall off as you're spinning because it just is very kind of coarse, but I spin as tight as I can because I wanna keep it, I wanna keep it as tight as I can. And uh, I'm gonna do that for a length up the thread. You can see it looks a little buggy there. I'm gonna to try to keep that tight. This is the hardest part of the fly, for sure. Um, trying to get this dubbing spun on and not have it be too loose. I 
doing okay. And a lot of this stuff falls loose when you're doing this too. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but. All right, we're gonna go with that length for now. If we need more, we'll add more. I basically wanna start down at the tail and just start getting a little bit of that color wrapped in here and work it up as you go along. The It's a little bumpy sometimes, but the, um, I'm gonna need a little more dubbing because it got a little loose there. Let's put in a little bit more. The, the wire is gonna help create that taper as well. It's gonna help hold some of that in and, and keep it a little more consistent. I just want a little bit more because I like to fill in the head of it a little bit better. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, you can see there's stuff hanging off everywhere. That's what's good about this stuff. You can leave them on if you want to make them look like legs or you can cut them back if you want to when, when you're done. But we're going to start wrapping that wire. We're going to go up from the bottom up and this is going to help compress some of that and make it a little more consistent as you wrap. Okay, we'll bring that up to the top and we'll just tie that in at the head. And what I do is I do a couple of wraps behind, bring the wire back, a couple of wraps in front. Oh, that sucker just shifted on me a little bit. That bead head just shifted on me a little bit. It's okay, it's just not, I'm gonna add a little more dubbing because of that. I don't like that it did that. Usually it does not do that. That slid off the that lead that was there. I just want to cover that in a little bit more. There we go. I don't like that break in it. Um, I want to put that hot spot on it. And I just build enough where I'm just going to get a little bit of that red coming through before I do my whip finish. I don't like a too big of a hot spot. I just like a little one. And there it is. Oh, that actually came off. Okay. So there's the nymph. You can clean it up a little bit. From my angle, I see a bunch that are sticking up that are a little bit bigger. Um, you can just either pull them out or cut them. Um, anything that hangs a little bit lower, I tend to leave because they kind of look like legs. Um, so it certainly does not hurt to have them look a little buggy or a little looser. Um, some people really like that. You know, really just make them the way you want them. So, uh, Anyway, this is the, the, the nymph that I call the Peacock Ice Dub Nymph. It's really just because of the dubbing that I use. Again, you want to make them a little bit different, just change your dubbing. Um, you know, I have one of my boxes here. I'll just kind of hold it up a little bit so you can see. You know, I've got a lot of those, um, the Ice Dub Nymphs. I've got some Rainbow Warrior type nymphs. Um, some more really just, um, you know, hair's ear style nymphs. A little more of the ice dub nymphs but with a different head and a little different style um, some Frenchies some caddis as you can see my sexy stones are pretty much all out I have a lot of those to redo um, but you know just different different styles different colors is really you know it'll it'll make um, you'll get quite a bit of variety just by just by doing that different um, different dubbing styles and different bead heads um, so anyway, this is the Ice Dub Peacock Nymph. Hopefully you guys can tie a few of these up and, uh, and use them and catch some fish on them. Uh, I find them to be very effective where I fish. And uh, again, if you wanna take part in the drawing, I'm gonna be giving away six of these flies. And I might throw in uh, a fly or two of some of the other patterns. So if you're a fly tire, you can kind of pattern those as well. And um, again, all you have to do is be a subscriber on the channel. Um, you know, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment letting us know what kinds of videos you guys want to see. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you soon.